In this video, I'm gonna share with you how to structure your team, depending if you're going for a phase one SBIR or a phase two SBIR. Hey guys, I'm Stacey Chin from keepyourequity.co, and our mission is to help startup founders just like you secure non-dilutive grant funding from the SBIR or the STTR program in order to bring your innovations to the commercial market. Whether you're going for a phase one SBIR or a phase two SBIR, the reviewers are gonna be looking and evaluating you and the expertise of your team members. And this is something not to take lightly, because at the end of the day, this will impact your final score. So after working with hundreds of startup founders on their SBIR strategy, one of the top questions I get from many principal investigators is, who do I include on my team as a senior key personnel? And frankly, there's a lot of different factors that goes into that answer. So for instance, what federal agency are you applying to? Two, what are you proposing in your SBIR strategy? And three, which is the one we're gonna focus on today in this video, are you applying for a phase one or a phase two SBIR? So I'm gonna go over the four top tips I've used to to help my clients structure their teams for their SBIR proposals. And although what I'm gonna share with you can be applied across multiple different agencies, I'm going to specifically focus on NIH and NSF SBIR programs. But before I do, please hit the like and subscribe button so you won't miss out on any tips and tricks on how to secure non-dilutive SBIR and STTR funding. Tip number one, before you figure out who to include on your team, you first have to figure out what is the goal and what are you trying to propose in your SBIR application. So as a reviewer myself, I can tell you that reviewers are going to be looking for whether you as the principal investigator along with your team members all have the necessary skill sets and expertise to carry out what you want to propose. This is what I've done to help my clients lay out who to put on their team. First, you have to figure out what are your goals or objectives for your SBIR application. Next, who do I need in order to carry out those particular goals? So for example, if you are a company developing a new drug delivery scaffold to deliver some sort of therapeutic to a particular target site, viewers will be looking for one, just someone on your team that has drug delivery development experiences. And then two, do you have a clinician that has been in this space for many, many years? Or in another example, if you're doing a phase two SBIR and proposing to do a clinical trial, do you have the right expertise of people who have done those similar clinical trials before and have carried those studies out to completion? So by identifying what you want to propose in your SBIR application, this will help you to identify who are the right people you will need to carry out those goals in your SBIR proposal. And by having the right people on your side, this would give reviewers the confidence that you have all the key expertise and resources to be successful in your SBIR strategy. Tip number two, your team should look different between phase one and phase two. So typically in a phase one SBIR application, your goal is to establish the technical merit, feasibility, and commercial potential of your proposed R&D efforts. So that means startups are typically trying to make a proof of concept or validating that their innovation works or has some sort of commercial potential. And because of that, you want to showcase the technical and clinical expertise of the principal investigator along with the supporting team member. Now in phase two, your team has to look a little bit different since the goal of phase two is now about positioning your technology or innovation towards commercial success. So that means startups are typically proposing to do multi-site clinical trials, pursue manufacturing studies, regulatory hurdles, animal studies, and looking at scalability. When I work with clients that have gotten a phase one SBIR award, it's really important to prepare them for their phase two, the making sure their team can also position them for commercial success upon phase two completion. And tip number three, whether you're going for a phase one or a phase two proposal, your team should have different but complementary expertise compared to you as the principal investigator. So after you have identified who to have on your team in your SBIR application, it's really important that you highlight each of the person's role and responsibilities according to their skill set. And this needs to be clear and concise on paper, both in your application and in each person's individual bio sketch. So for example, if I'm applying for a phase one SBIR to the NIH, and since I'm a chemist, I had to make sure my chemistry background is highlighted both in the research strategy and also in my bio sketch. Now, if I included four other chemists as senior key personnel on my team, it won't really add much value since we pretty much can do the same thing given our technical backgrounds and skill sets. So in this example, depending what we want to propose, it makes more sense to figure out what other key expertise and skill sets will be needed that can complement my background as a chemist. So for example, if we're developing some sort of new medical device scaffold, it might be advantageous to have someone that has a clinical background, a biomedical engineering background, and maybe a business background instead. So at the end of the day, you wanna make sure that you as a principal investigator is supported by a strong team, complementary but different types of skill sets to bring to the table. Tip number four, make sure you as the principal investigator and each of your team members can shine on paper. And this is typically done in the bio sketch section of your SBIR application. So these bio sketches are mandatory documents that you have 
have to include within your SBIR application, whether it's a phase one or a phase two. Here in your bio sketch, you want to include educational background for you as the PI, along with your team members, employment history, awards, publications, and past patents as well. And so depending on which federal agency you're applying for, different bio sketch formats will be required in your SBIR application. Read the solicitation to make sure that you follow the requirements to prepare a bio sketch. I'll leave in the link below a format for the NIH SBIR along with the NSF SBIR. So that concludes my tips and tricks of how to figure out who to include in your team in your SBIR application and how to make each of the individual senior personnel shine on paper. Leave in the comment section below what other strategies have you considered by picking the right people to be on your team for your SBIR application. Thank you so much for watching to the end of this video and don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button so you learn more tips and tricks on how to secure non-dilutive funding so you can keep your equity throughout your fundraising journey.